It's the NFL on EA Sports, where we'll see a brawl inside the AFC South. It's the Houston Texans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 25. On the banks of the St. Johns River, there's a good look inside Everbank Stadium here in downtown Jacksonville. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. Here's the former UCLA Bruin, Kaimi Fairbairn, to get this one started. And off we go from Jacksonville. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So here come the Jaguars to take over for the first time behind Trevor Lawrence, their quarterback in season number four. Last year was a bit of a mixed bag for Lawrence as he started off looking like a budding superstar. But then he suffered an ankle injury and was a shell of himself the rest of the way. His team needs him to stay healthy if they plan on maximizing their full potential. And if that ends up being the case, they'll have a good shot to win a lot of games here in 2024. Duvernay in motion. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and instead a give up the middle. And a short pickup to about the 25. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 25, here's second down and seven. Here's Lawrence. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll try the left side with ETN. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Early down stuffs have put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. And they'll go again with ETN. This to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Now, during that run, an injury here, we got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 43. Lawrence will throw. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Henry Toto there to bring him down defensively. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage. But right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Now, Lawrence. Screenplay. Here's ETN fighting him off. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. 
And give him nine yards on the second down screen play. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved. Just as you said, they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Here's Lawrence to throw. And that's knocked away and incomplete. Aziz Al Shair, he's the one who got a hand on it and knocked it free. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Back deep is Steven Sims. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Texans offense heading out behind their quarterback in his second season. Last year's offensive rookie of the year, C.J. Stroud. So this is what we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Now Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll make it second down. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, but what a nice job improvising, finding other options, and completing the pass anyway. Now a second and six. On the ground, this is Joe Mixon. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Here's Stroud. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Texans first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain. So they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And it goes down. Brought down by Trayvon Walker on the pass rush. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Stroud. He finds his running back, Mixon. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Here's third and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. That is Joshua Hines Allen working his way in for the sack. They'll make that a second sack here on their first drive out defensively. And not to get ahead of ourselves, but they're, they're on pace for double-digit sacks at this point. Well, they're going to have to find a way to tamp that down, aren't they? So if you're the play caller, you're telling your quarterback maybe some screens, maybe some draws, hard count, use your voice inflection a little bit, anything to try and slow that pressure down. The Texans send the punter out as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. 
So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. A very good starting field position for the Jaguars offense as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Here now, second and four. On play action, Lawrence. He'll drop that underneath DTM. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. On uh, first and 10, it's Bigsby. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Second and seven, operating from the 34. ETN up the middle. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys made the play and he couldn't even get going moving the football lawrence that escapes the sack and that is incomplete blanketed coverage by houston makes it fourth down so many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs but in this case the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it And that is no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 43, here's a second and eight. Stroud to throw it. That one complete. It's Tank Dell. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. Mixing up the middle. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Devon Hamilton with the tackle. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Back to Mixon on second down. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, 
They have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. They'll let this go deep for Collins. And it's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Well, how about the challenge we're seeing here in this game early? Man coverage against some fleet receivers. That time, the defense won. Here's Tommy Townsend now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Ball at the 14 for second and five. Here's a give to Bigsby. And a short gain across the 15 to the 17-yard line. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. Now Lawrence to throw. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. A punt of 46, a return of five. And the Texans will take over. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? That's for the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. And Stroud now to throw. Got his man, Dell. And a big game that time. He's out of bounds on what will be the final play of this first quarter. No score after one on EA Sports. Texans football to start quarter two as they've got it with a first and ten. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. It's the safety, Antonio Johnson, who dragged him down. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Stroud looking to throw. 
A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their rounds. That's caught again by Schultz. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Pass complete. Joe Mixon out of the backfield. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Texans post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well, CD, you know he's got great options at wide receiver tight end, but there he looks to the backfield, and it results in a touchdown. I love how you laid that out. So many options. You maybe forget about some of the ones that you should be covering, and they made them pay with that one, didn't they? You forget about the guys in the backfield? They're eligible, too. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. So the drive there took six plays, and the result, a Houston touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Well, now how about this return? And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Now Lawrence, that's complete to his tight end, Farrell. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that will bring up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. They go play action now, Lawrence. To the right side, and, and he fumbled it. It's on the ground, and the Texans scoop it. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. C.J. Stroud and the offense back out there. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. This is caught. It's Woods. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Oftentimes, now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air. Nice chunk of yardage there. 
And then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. They'll look to throw now on first down. This is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Nico Collins from 10 yards out. And the Texans are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays. The long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They did a really nice job there defensively. They strung the play out, didn't give them a cutback lane. On each play, you have guys what I call our BCR players. Guys are responsible for the bootleg, for the cutback, and for the reverse. They played that one perfectly. And rode him right out of bounds. Here's Lawrence. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. The Jaguars on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 8. Lawrence will throw. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 40. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here's Logan Cook now, as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Houston set to take over. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here. They could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But this is the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 to nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how do we have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking, usually the best way to maintain control. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. 
Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Right side complete. That's Woods. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Stroud working out of the gun. He'll find his running back, Joe Mixon. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 40. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. Well, they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Stroud sets up the play action. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a halt. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I'm actually looking at this play with defensive eyes here, partner, because they were still laser focused on him after his earlier exploits on this drive. I think they went back to the well just a little bit too soon. He got across the line of scrimmage, but they certainly weren't giving up much more than that. Now Stroud. He's got it to Collins complete. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. A gain there of 21 yards. And now at this point in the first half, you've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And that's going to bring up second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Stroud. On a slant, here's Collins. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And the Texans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues down. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown. Houston, Joe Mixon with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Texans take a three-touchdown lead. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that makes the score 21 to zip. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. 
Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores, and I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. If they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. Up past the 30, second down coming up. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second down and six now. Play action. It's Lawrence. He'll get this into the hands of the wideout from LSU. And finally, he's taken down at the 18. It's a big play for the Jaguars. 51 yards. Just a breakdown there defensively. It looked like someone got their wires crossed because no one seemed to pick him up at all. He's running free, and there's not a quarterback in the league who's going to miss that throw. That's a huge play. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Here's Lawrence to throw. He's got Thomas yet again complete. And the Jaguars are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. ETN, and they'll run with ETN. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Travis ETN taking it in from four yards out. And the Jaguars are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Well, that was a quick drive. The passing game set it up, and then the running game finishes it off. And how about how few plays it was to get it done, but they threw it downfield and then pounded it into the end zone. And as a former defender, I can tell you, it hurts just a little bit more when they run it into the end zone instead of throwing it. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and that'll cut the lead to 21-7. to So that drive, four plays. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. to the touchdown cook now to kick this one away and out a little across the 25 to the 27 the Texans offense and CJ Stroud getting ready for this next drive and he's had things all his way in this first half the numbers sensational as he'll look to add to him with another drive here The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Throwing now is Stroud. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down and three. Here's Stroud.
Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Stroud out of the gun here. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. And Stroud now to throw. That's into the hands of Woods. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 36. Now a timeout called for by the offense as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Stroud to throw it. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Now a second and ten. Here goes Stroud again. He finds his target. It's Schultz. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 22-yard line. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sacked back at the 29. Josh Hines Allen. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. So that now four first half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This one from 46 yards out. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and they will open things up a bit more. It's 24 to 7. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. So we have reached halftime here. It's the visitors, the Texans out in front. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Joe Mixon who had it working in the first half. He found the end zone twice, once on the ground and once in the passing game, as he proved he's anything but a one-dimensional running back. 
All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Texans offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner, yeah, they went to the tunnel with a the lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Stroud looking to throw. Another one caught by Collins. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. That's complete. And oh, he caught it up. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. You probably talked about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up, not that time. The Texans send the punter out as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and ten from back at their own 10-yard line. In motion right here, Washington. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Second and a couple. They go play action with Lawrence. And it's complete. He gets this one to Washington. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. To the right side and complete to Thomas. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. A few moving pieces on that play because that was an RPO, was it not? It was, but one important piece that didn't move incorrectly, the offensive line. 
Because when you're running this play, as he continued down the line of scrimmage, sometimes the lineman can wander downfield. And if you're more than a yard downfield, it's illegal to throw the football at that point. But they held their ground, held their spot, and turned it into a nice game. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is that right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. 51 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and four. Now Lawrence. Complete to Washington. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Lawrence giving to ETN here on the option. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because, remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. you got some times where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. That would complete downfield to Thomas. And all the way down to the five. It's a big play for the Jaguars. 49 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Back to the ground with ETN. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid game to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. Got to figure this is one they need here on third and goal. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. Hey, you're down on the scoreboard, but now your offense is in close, and this is where, as a quarterback, you say, I've got to make a play here. Doesn't matter whether it's a pinpoint throw or a scramble like this one. He takes matters into his own hands and delivers a touchdown run. A try here for the extra point. It's up and good, so they claw back into it. 24-14 now. A 10-play drive that time. And it was capped off by Trevor Lawrence taking it in himself. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. 
the visitors offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more and he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one this defense has been totally taken apart and that is borne out in his numbers he's been terrific all game long the Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive this now a 10-point game, so things tightening a little bit after that last score. That's complete. It's Collins. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. Okay, so the personal foul penalty. And those are some important yards lost right there. Yeah, it all comes down to discipline, doesn't it? And every team tells us that they coach it, they preach it. In this case, it slipped a little bit. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Got his man, Dell. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Now Stroud. Over the middle complete. It's Schultz. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal as the tackle made at the 10-yard line. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Stroud. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against the front. There's prepared for him to try and take off. And the ball smacked down on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Robert Woods, a five-yard touchdown. And the Texans are able to widen their advantage. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. A drive that time of six plays. And it ends with a Robert Woods touchdown reception. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. 
The Jags offense and Brian Thomas getting set to take over once more. And you see the numbers for him into this third quarter. They just pop off the screen. He has been open throughout. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. From the 33, here's a second down and six. Duvernay in motion from the shotgun Lawrence a quick throw they're going to be batted away and incomplete receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time separation that's what's going to make the play successful that time there was very little and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted this offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down Lawrence will throw A good decision in the end to pull it and run, get some nine yards and a first. Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt for a second they pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on a keeper the moment it revealed itself. Play action. It's Lawrence. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. A second and 10 forthcoming here. Third quarter action from Jacksonville. Now Lawrence. That's taken in by Duvernay. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Straight ahead, ETN. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Aziz al Shair in to make the stop. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and nine. Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now we've got a third and four. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. From the gun on third down, Lawrence. He targets Ingram for another grab. And he is going to have a Jags first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. 
Throwing again here. It's Lawrence. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So a P.I. call going to cost him there defensively. What did you see? Well, I think it's the right call, partner, because sometimes we'll see officials kind of let them play. But by the letter of the law, that's definitely a penalty. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. That was well coached and even better executed because you saw him looking for the cutback lane, never materialized, and had excellent pursuit to stack that play up. Second and seven. Here's Lawrence to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Thomas has got it, complete. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But they've certainly not shied away from throwing the football as they've leaned on their quarterback to start this game. Four straight passes right out of the gate, with that last one earning them a new set of downs. And now hold everything here as the challenge flag is out, and we're going to get a review of that last play. The thing that they'll be looking at is a spot of the football, and uh, this is always such a tough one for officials to get exactly right. Not just because of how fast the game's going, but just trying to get the right sight line to the football, that's not always easy. We'll see what they decide here. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made, pure and simple. And look, everything else that goes into running a good pass route, throw it all out if you don't catch the ball. Been that kind of game throwing the football so far, nothing going right offensively. The quick slant caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Parker Washington from eight yards out. And the Jaguars have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Extra point attempt to come here. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. That one was an extended drive. 14 plays all told. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The visitors' offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes a right read seemingly every time. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. 
first downs, they can't touch the ball. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Texans on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three. Stroud to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Throwing now is Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Schultz. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Here's second and three. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight reel. It's not going to make the highlight reel, but it will be the focus of the film session that the team has to sit through. I've sat through those before. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays, and they actually fast forward through those. All right, that was good. All right, great. They get to the bad ones and really illuminate him. Not cool. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 19. A very well-executed play. It goes for 29 yards. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. That's caught again by Schultz. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Texans are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. An important score there, CD, and now an important extra point because it would make it a three-score game. Love the math there. And at this point in the fourth quarter, look, we all need next-gen stats, right? We all use them, but we don't need them here, do we? Because that means it's almost a certain victory. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that drive in total, eight plays. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Yeah. 
Now a crease here as he's past the 30. The Jaguars getting set to go. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Here's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram, and he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. From the gun, it's Lawrence. And that one too wide and incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time, spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Now Lawrence. And that will be incomplete as well. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go. Got to have it. Lawrence. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. And as we look back at how we got here, you'll notice a common theme in these highlights. A lot of yardage through the air. The passing game has been sharp right from the outset. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A handoff to Mixon. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 40 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. This offensive line starting to win up front. You win that battle in the trenches, you can kind of wear them down here late. So you bring in the second part to that equation, and that's the big running back the big bruiser who can get more than what's blocked and break a few extra tackles and gain yardage. Back to Mixon on first down. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route. You are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. So five yards there as one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. 
Apparently, that didn't happen. Stroud working out of the gun. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. And Stroud now to throw. Flush to his right. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. C.J. Stroud taking it in from four yards out as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Defensively by now, you know his ability. You know he has it in him to take off and run. Yeah, because they knew coming into this game, but we've already seen examples in this contest that he can run the football. I think they're going to examine different ways to rush him now. Is it, are they going to do it with different lanes? Are they going to use a spy? But they have to come up with options because right now, he's hurting them. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and the lead is now 24. That time, a six-play drive, and it was C.J. Stroud who finished off that drive with the touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And now out come the Jags. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And it's complete. He gets this one to Washington. They're giving those short little routes, tackled him in bounds too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes, but now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down and three. Now Lawrence to throw. That's to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three times and eight chances. This time it's third and three. He's got his target. That's complete. And he works free. He's still on his feet. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Brian Thomas, 64 yards. And the Jaguars get a bit closer. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, C.D., and well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense, and he made sure to let his quarterback know. Just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. They'll try and run it up the middle. And he is going to be stopped short of the goal line. Oh, they'll mark him inside the one. He just couldn't keep churning those extra few inches. And the two-point attempt is turned aside.
So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the effort snuffed out. The Texans' hands team recovers. The risk-reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play, and here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them, and field position leads you to that type of play calling, and whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage is switched to their opponent. Mixon with a first down carry. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. At this stage of the game, with the score where it is, the key here is to hand bounds, and he did just that. Not by a huge margin, but he stayed in. And those come up in what we like to call winning edge meetings. The things that you have to do, late game situations, kicking situations, it doesn't matter what it is, the things you have to do to win a game, and that comes up in that meeting, then you practice it, They've got to be happy to see it executed, being able to stay in bounds and work the clock. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Once again, they run with Mixon. And he can only get this to the 42-yard line. And that is not near enough. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. The Texans send the punter out as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. The Jaguars again ready to take over on offense. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end... I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. Open man is Duvernay. The Jaguars are going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll look to throw here on first down. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Here's second and 10. From the shotgun, Lawrence completes it to Evan Ingram. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. Lawrence going to throw again. Washington's got it. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A well-executed 22-yard gain. 
Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now Lawrence. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. I think this is what this game's become now. You just go deep, see if we can get something to go our way. Yeah, not the most creative or most inventive play call there, but not much has worked for them throughout this game. They're almost at a loss about what to dial up. Line of scrimmage, again, the four-yard line, second and goal. Again, it's Lawrence. And did he get the feet down? Yes, touchdown. Devin Duvernay from four yards out and the Jaguars are able to cut into that deficit and yeah that touchdown counts for their team but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys doesn't it <laughs> yeah it's just something maybe positive to look at on film but this one's over let's be honest yeah I, th I agree with you totally on that one extra point splits the uprights and that'll make this now an 11 point deficit so that winds up a seven-play drive all told, and it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And they've got it. They recovered it. But hang on now, though. There's a penalty flag down. Well, CD, you understand. I mean, they're so eager trying to get back in this game here in the fourth quarter, but they touched that one a little too early before it went 10 yards. Brandon, in such a high-stakes scenario, everyone's feeling the pressure on this play. The special teams coordinator, which one is he going to pick in terms of kicks? Can the kicker execute it? Can the team wait for 10 yards? So many variables, and in this case, they didn't get it done. To a knee goes Stroud, and that is going to be all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on all those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.